Okay, so welcome to uh, Big Anthropology Seminar. Uh, today's uh, speaker is Ayşe Borat, so it's great, great pleasure to have her here. And uh, she's from uh, Bursa Technical University, and we are going to hear about simplicial analogs of homotopic distance. So please, uh, Ayşe, uh, you, can, you can start whenever you like. Thank you very much, uh, and thank you very much for inviting me to Big Seminars. Um, today, I will talk about simplicial analogs of homotopic distance, uh, and here are my uh, contents. Uh, first of all, I will introduce uh, homotopic distance, and then I will um, mention uh, its importance, and then I will talk about its basic properties, and then I will introduce uh, two different simplicial analogs of uh, homotopic distance. Both of them are called continuity distance, but one's, one is in the sense of Macias, Virgos, and Mosquera Luis, and the second one is in the sense of uh, Carlos Ortiz, Adriana Lara, Jesus Gonzalez, and myself. So let me start with, um, with the definition of uh, homotopic distance. <clears throat> So, um, so uh, we have two continuous maps, uh, F and G, uh, and we say that the homotopic distance between them is the least integer K if we could find an open covering of X of the domain such that um, the restriction of F and G on each UI is, hom uh, is homotopic. So uh, actually, um, this is an abstract definition and I want to mention it in a more concrete way. So let's mention it in a more concrete way. Um, so we are asking if we are asking if um, F and G are homotopic on the whole domain. So if the answer is yes, then we will say that the homotopic distance between uh, F and G is equal to zero. But if the answer is no, then we will ask um if is it possible to um if we ask if it is possible to um subdivide the domain let's say into two pieces um subdivide the domain into two pieces and both of them are open um, such that um, on each uh, piece, uh, if we restrict F and G, then these guys will be homotopic. So if this is the case, then we will say that the homotopic distance between F and G is equal to one. But if this is not the case, then we keep going. So we will try to find uh, a subdivision of the domain, um, let's say into three pieces, um, such that on each uh, open set, uh, the F and G are homotopic. So actually, uh, in some sense, um, it measures um, how far the homotopic distance, homotopic distance measures how far F and G are um, away from being homotopic. So this is the idea of homotopic distance. Uh, and uh, let me talk about its importance. Uh, but before I start with that, I want to introduce some basic definitions 
One of them is due to Michael Farber, uh, and this is called topological complexity. And the second one is due to Lusternik and Schnellmann category, uh, sorry, the Lusternik and the Schnellmann. And uh, the concept name is Lusternik Schnellmann category. So, um, so what is topological complexity? We start with a, a pet vibration from the pet space of X to X cross X, and we take a path and map it into its endpoints. So uh, we say that topological complexity of a space X is the least integer K if we can find an open covering of X cross X such that uh, there is a section uh, of the vibration on each UI. Well, again, what is the motivation behind this? So actually the motivation behind this is the motion planning problem. Um, so let's start with a configuration space X configuration space. So we have X and uh, we have any two points in X, let's say A and B, and we want to construct a path, a continuous path from A to B. So, um, and we want to construct that path with a rule. In other words, we have two points, A from X and B from X. This is our input. And we want to produce um, a path in X such that its initial point is A and its final point is B. And uh, this will be our output. And we want to assign uh, a rule. Is it um, possible to assign a rule? And this is our question. So uh, let's try to write it in the mathematical terms. So, um, so we start with um, a map from Px to x cross x. But the thing is, we are not sure if we could find such a uh, map, but we are, we are sure that we can always find a projection from the path space to x cross x by uh, gamma is mapped into its end points. So we always have such a projection where where it's a vibration. And uh, now our question, this question becomes the following. Um, can we find, uh, can we find a section, a continuous section of the path vibration? And um, this is a theorem due to Michael Farber says yes if and only if X is contractible. So the question is, how about the non-contractible non spaces? Um, and um, topological, con uh, topological complexity actually um, works on that question. Um, and in some sense, we can say that uh, topological complexity um, is uh, it measures it measures how far uh, the path vibration away from um, accepting a section. And um, moreover, we can define the Steinig-Schnellmann category as follows. Uh, we 
uh, it is the least integer k if we can find an open covering of x such that this inclusion is null homotopy for each i. Um, and now let's turn back to our question, why homotopic distance is important. So if we consider uh, projection maps as defined in here, then we can see that the homotopic distance between uh, these projection maps is the same thing as the topological complexity. Moreover, it is quite easy to see that uh, if we take the identity map and the constant map, then uh, the homotopic distance between them is just the lustanic schneiderman category. And moreover, a less obvious uh, a less obvious characterization is the following. So if we consider these inclusion maps as defined in here, then we can say that the homotopic distance between these inclusion maps is the, ca uh, the category, the lustanic schneiderman category. So we can see that the homotopic distance is a generalization of topological complexity and lustanic schneiderman category. And moreover, it has a relation with uh, CCAT, the sectional category. And um, the relation is given by a theorem uh, due to Macias Virgos and Mosquera Lewis. Uh, and, and by the way, what is a sectional category? Actually, it says just recall the definition of topological complexity and just delete um, the path vibration and write any vibration instead of it. So just replace. Um, the path vibration with any vibration, um, let's say Q from E to B. And this is uh, the sectional category. Um, okay, now um, the importance of homotopic distance uh, comes from the fact that um, in homotopic distance, we deal with maps, but in topological complexity and in the lustanic schneiderman category, we deal with spaces. So uh, since that homotopic distance is a generalization of TC and CAT, um, then uh, homotopic distance gives us opportunity to play. And moreover, uh, homotopic distance gives us to uh, play with, homo um, with composition of maps since that it deals with maps. So it is likely to prove open problems in TC by using composition properties of homotopic distance. Uh, and also uh, there are some known TC and CAT related theorems and they can also um, easily be proved by using homotopic distance. Uh, and as an example, I will prove this by using homotopic distance in a second. Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, the slide just two before this one, you were saying that the homotopic distance is the sectional category. So there is no general results about sectional category on this case. Like, uh, wouldn't be better to study just the sectional category than the um, even more general, I guess. Yeah, it. I believe that it will be a good question, um, but I don't know much about the sectional category. Uh, the political complexity is a, a specific case, a particular case. Then we have. Um, I think more materials for topological complexity. So like, um, is there a reason to uh, not to go into sectional category directly? Like, is it hard some way it's not? Well, actually this uh, topic is quite new. And uh, the first paper is published in, in this year. So maybe the next paper can be in sectional category. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So it seems like even more general. So maybe directly go into that. Uh -huh. Like interesting to me. But mm -hmm. thanks. Thank you. 
Um, okay. Um, so, okay, the importance of the homotopic distance. Well, as, uh, as I mentioned before, homotopic distance uh, deals with uh, maps. Uh, so it can consider the composition of maps. And we have three uh, theorems. Uh, they tell how homotopic distance behaves under compositions. Uh, the first one is, well, all of these theorems are due to Macias Virgos and Mosquero Luis. The first one is we have um, three maps. And uh, actually, we start with F and G, and we compose uh, a map from the left hand side. And then we have this inequality. And the third theorem is also similar. We have we start with F and G, and we compose H from the left um, <laughs> right hand side, and we have this inequality. And the second theorem is um, it is. Uh, we have a pair of maps and another pair of, pair of maps such that this homotopy is hold uh, and then we have such an inequality. Uh, in theorem two, is it on the right hand side? Is it supposed to be D, D of F, A, F, G? Or... Which one? The second one? So, so, yeah, so it's on the right hand side, you say D of H, H prime. Right. Is this supposed to be F, F, F and G or? Oh no, sorry. Okay, okay. So you're. Oh, I'm a bit confused. Uh, okay, so I, I thought you have two maps, F and G, and you're comparing the composition with a single map from. Okay, I think I got the point. Uh, I'm so, not so, sure if we have. So, so I, I would expect instead of H, H prime, I would expect to see one map there and. Uh, uh, let me. Okay, sorry. Maybe I, I'm confusing myself. No, it, you're right, actually. Um, but I think this is true. Um, well, I can double check after the uh, presentation. But uh, on the left hand side, there's no H prime, for example. There's... Yes, I see your point, but. Um, uh, uh, well. Sorry. I think there is some sort of triangle in the cult, like the distance between FH prime and GH prime plus distance is less than distance H and H prime. So when they're homotopic, the distance is zero already. It, the idea is probably some sort of triangle in the cult. Uh, okay, but I was comparing to theorem one. In theorem one, we have a map that goes from Y to Z, and this time we should have a map from some space to X and the same thing holds on the other side. So we should have a symmetric version, a version that's symmetric to theorem one. That's what I was expecting. That's why I'm confused. So H is supposed to be on the right-hand side. Okay, but the right-hand side uh, of the inequality is, should be, uh, okay, maybe I'm confusing. That's why I... <laughs> but, uh, this theorem two seems a bit, interesting because uh, we don't have any h dash here um, and we don't also have any h here but uh, i'm pretty sure it's okay uh, the idea is we are taking um right. actually you this theorem too probably holds in both direction right i mean you could probably put h's outside too it's not because H is inside. Mm. I mean, the, the, where you compose a uh, conjugation with H, a uh, composition with H could be in the other way too. I don't think. You mean this that one? Would make any difference. Yeah. No, I mean, do, do they have a version like that or not? No, or, they didn't mention, but uh, mm. yes, it must be true, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's not about uh, where H is, but it's about some sort of triangling cult, kind of, I think, right? The distance between F, G with H inside I'm and H prime sure inside. The triangle inequality, because uh, triangle yeah. inequality requires some um, normal space condition. 
um, but I think this is uh, the right version of the theorem. Well, I, I can double check it after the presentation, if you like. Okay. Thanks. Um, okay, um, I was mentioning, okay, the last theorem, theorem two, and uh, let me prove uh, one of oh, sorry. the- Sorry, yeah, I think I was saying the theorem three. Okay, that's what I was saying. Okay, so, yeah, that's what I thought theorem two should be, but I think you stated as theorem three. Okay, okay, sorry, yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, now let me turn back to this um, property and um, I want to uh, prove it uh, by using homotopic distance in a very easy way. So we start with category of X and we mentioned that it is just the homotopic distance between the identity and the constant map. And um, we can write the identity by using uh, the projection at the inclusions, and also we can write the constant map again by using projection at the inclusion maps. So we have this guy, and from the last theorem, we have this inequality, and we already know that the uh, homotopic distance between the projection is the um, topological complexity. Um, right. Um, now, let me um, consider some properties, some basic properties of homotopic distance. Uh, the first one is the homotopic distance between F and G and uh, the distance between G and uh, F are the same thing. The second one is uh, if F and G are homotopic, then their distance is equal to zero and the other way around. Um, and um, the third um, proposition is um, if F and F dash and G and G dash are homotopic, then um, these guys are the same distances. And we have uh, another um, property which is also called sub-additivity. Uh, property. So if you are given two maps and a finite covering of the domain, then we can always find such an inequality. And um, uh, the fifth uh, property gives uh, that homotopic distance is homotopy invariant in some sense. Um, such that we first consider um, this um, commutative diagram. Well, it is commutative in the sense of um, being homotopic. And later we consider this commutative diagram as in here in the sense of being homotopic. Uh, and then, um, and by the way, uh, here, I'm sorry. And here, X and X dash and Y and Y dash, they, are, uh, they have the same homotopic type. Um, so we say that the homotopic distance between F and G and uh, the distance between F dash and G dash are the same. Um, and we have more properties. Uh, the first one is uh, the triangle inequality. Uh, we have three continuous maps and we want the domain to be a normal space. Uh, and also we have uh, the seventh one is um, we have um, two pairs of maps and they are composable with each other. And uh, then we have such an inequality provided that X is a normal space. And in the last uh, inequality, I'm sorry, in the last proposition, uh, we consider the product of the maps. Uh, and we say that we have such an inequality provided that X cross X dash, in other words, 
the domain of these guys uh, are uh, normal space. <clears throat> now, uh, let me consider the first simplicial analog, uh, the quantitative distance uh, of the homotopic distance. Uh, but before I um, give the definition of the contiguous distance, I want to mention the uh, definition of being contiguous and being in the same contiguity class. Um, so we start with two simplicial maps, uh, and we say that if a simplex in the domain uh, is given as sigma, then this product gives us a simplex in L. If this is the case, then we say that phi and psi are contiguous. And moreover, we say that two maps, two simplicial maps are called C contiguous. Uh, if there exists a sequence of maps such that uh, H0 is phi and HC is psi and um, each um, consecutive uh, pair is contiguous for each i. And um, by the way, C contiguity, uh, sorry, C being C contiguous uh, denoted by this. And when we say um, phi tilde psi, this means that uh, phi and uh, psi uh, are C contiguous for some C. And also, this is uh, this will be called uh, as um, phi and psi are in the same contiguity class. Um, now I want to introduce the um, contiguity distance. Uh, this definition is due to Macias Virgos and Mosquera Lewis, uh, and it uh, says that we have two simplicial maps, and uh, the contiguity distance between these simplicial maps is the least integer k if uh, there exists a subcomplexes of k of the domain such that uh, pi and psi, the restriction of pi and psi on each ji um, belongs to the same quantity class. Uh, Actually, just to motivate myself on this. Um, so this uh, contiguity, uh, mm -hmm. when you have a maximum facet face on there, they will be homotopic if we restrict two functions, a simplicial map is the continuous functions. Is it why you're defining a contiguity like this? Is this uh, maximum facets will be your open sets? Is that where you're heading or? Um, so what's the motivation for this definition uh, about contiguity? Con you mean this? Yeah, two? this. Uh, Actually, uh, mm -hmm. well, uh, this guy is uh, the simplicial version of um, homotopy. Yeah, I mean, um, on the maximum faces or on every simplex? Is that? Uh, well, the continuous um, setting is the um, two continuous maps are uh, homotopic. But if we um, switch to simplicial settings, then um, we want um, some phi and psi some simplicial maps to be uh, in the same quantity class. And Whose theorem is that? It's so interesting. I, I haven't seen it, so I don't. Okay. So uh, actually, mm -hmm. the first thing, uh, well, it is, first it is defined um, being contiguous, but the problem uh, about being contiguous is that uh, it is not, um an equivalence relation so they come up with that definition mm -hmm. so it is um it really is an equivalence re relation and then it corresponds to the uh, being homotopic uh, in the continuous setting so something about simplicial homotopy theory maybe implies such a thing 
realizations are homotopic? Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Something yes. Like mm -hmm. Exactly. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. Um, and okay. Uh, as before, uh, I said that the homotopy distance uh, is a generalization of TC and CAT. So actually, in here, we are expecting the same thing. So we expect conjugate distance to be a generalization of the simplicial LS category <clears throat> and a simplicial version of topological complexity uh, called discrete topological complexity. So what are these? definitions uh, so what is c cat uh, s cat and discrete tc uh, discrete tc is <clears throat> a definition due to fernandez ternuro <clears throat> sorry masias virgos minus and Wilshens. actually it says that uh, the discrete topological complexity of a complex is the least integer k if the categorical product is covered by k plus one power subcomplexes. And here, uh, power subcomplex means that we say that a simplicial subcomplex is called Farber subcomplex if a simplicial map, which is composed with the diagonal map, is in the same contiguity class with that inclusion. <clears throat> And um, the following theorem, this one, which gives the relation between discrete topological complexity and the conjugate distance, uh, is first proved by Fernandez Ternuro, Macias Virgos, Minus, and Vicious, Vicious without uh, mentioning conjugate distance. Uh, but uh, it is first uh, appeared. Uh, in this way, by using the conjugate distance uh, in, uh, in the paper by Macias Virgos and Mosquera Luis, and also an alternative proof uh, using conjugate distance is given by my colleagues, uh, um, my collaborators, uh, Mehmet Pomuk and Tanya Vargile, and by me. Um, and um, well, this theorem shows that um, the conjugate distance is uh, a generalization of the discrete topological complexity. And for the C cat, uh, I mean, uh, a simplicial LS category, um, it is defined by Fernandez, Ternuro, Macias, Virgos, and Wilshens. And it says that uh, simplicial LS category of a complex is the le least integer K if. Uh, K is covered by K plus one categorical subcomplexes. And by the way, categorical subcomplex means that um, a subcomplex is called categorical if there is a vertex, let's uh, pick uh, a vertex um, and say that uh, the inclusion map and the constant map on that vertex are in the same contiguity class. And um, a theorem uh, by Mehmet Pomuk, Tanya Vargil, and me tells that um, contiguity distance uh, between the identity and the constant map is the same uh, as uh, the simplicial LS category, and also uh, the contiguity distance between the inclusions is the same as the uh, simplicial. Uh, category. <clears throat> and um, we also. Can I ask you another question? Uh, so these simplicial distances, they have no relation to the continuous versions that uh, homotopy distance, and there, there is no uh, way to prove these theorems using the continuous versions by uh -huh. taking the realizations. Well, we did something, um, but not for that uh, analog. For the second analog, we proved that this. I'm asking mostly. Uh -huh. 
yeah, some this theorems is, like this. This, case, this, this is, is a continu continuous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We did this for the second uh, simplicial analog. Okay. Um, okay. Now, um, yes. Um, here, um, actually, maybe you remember this is the, um, I think, number five, the property number five. Uh, and uh, I would say that uh, for this theorem, uh, it gives, um, well, it says that contiguity distance is uh, um, contiguity invariant, I would say, contiguity invariant uh, in that sense. Um, by the way, strong equivalence means uh, being. Um, Sorry, having the same strong commutative type means this. And um, so what we have done about conjugate distance is we studied the behavior of uh, conjugate distance under the barycentric subdivision, and we end up with that theorem. And moreover, um, we studied the behavior of the conjugate distance under the composition of simplicial maps. For instance, we um, proved that pro theorem. And uh, moreover, uh, we gave alternative proofs to the non uh, TC, I'm sorry, discrete TC and uh, simplicial uh, cat related theorems. By the way, we didn't only consider the simplicial category of a complex, but we also consider it the simplicial category of a simplicial map. And this is actually defined by Scoville and Zwei. Uh, and uh, we gave the alternative proofs uh, using the contributor distance. And um, we also studied the relation between uh, contributor distance and the strong collapsibility of a complex. And for the uh, second, simplicial analog. Uh, this, this is also called conjugated distance, but uh, this will be denoted by D. Um, so first of all, um, before I mention it, um, mention the conjugate distance, I want to introduce uh, the conjugate subcomplex. And before that, what is a C conjugate subcomplex? We say that a subcomplex J of K is C conjugate subcomplex for some simplicial maps. If uh, the restriction of these simplicial maps on that specific subcomplex uh, are uh, C contiguous. And we say that a subcomplex is a, con a contiguity subcomplex for some simplicial maps uh, if uh, this subcomplex is. Uh, a C conjugate subcomplex for some C. And, um, okay, um, after that definition, we define the strict C conjugate distance between two simplicial maps. And this uh, particular uh, conjugate distance actually uh, gives the same conjugate distance as in the sense of Macias Virgos and Mosquera Lewis. Uh, and it is defined as follows. Uh, it is the least integer K such that K is covered by some subcomplexes uh, and each of which is a C conjugate subcomplex for Pi and Psi. And then we have uh, some monotonic uh, sequence and we um, uh, and we uh, define uh, the stabilized value of that monotonic uh, sequence as the strict conjugate distance of phi and psi. Um, by the way, I'm sorry that I mentioned it wrong. This guy is the same thing as the conjugate distance in the sense of Macias Virgos and Mosquera Lewis, uh, not this one, just the strict conjugate distance. 
and um, also we have more uh, definitions uh, in order to get that definition. Uh, so first of all, we set this and this. So what are they? First of all, I want to mention what these maps are. Uh, actually, these are these composition maps where this guy is the bit per centric subdivision. Uh, and um, uh, right. Then um, maybe I should write this as well. This is um, uh, this is uh, on C S D C is in here. Am I right? Right. Um, and now we have some monotonic seconds and we call um, the quantitative distance as the stabilized value of that sequence. Well, um, these, um, these formal uh, definition is not very easy to follow, so I want to uh, give the motivation for these uh, formal definitions. The idea is as follows. We start with two simplicial maps and we say that BC contiguity distance is the list integer K if we can find uh, some subcomplexes covering the bits per centric subdivision such that these two guys are C contiguous for each I. Uh, and we say that um, we have some monotonic sequence and we call the stabilized value of that sequence a uh, bit conjugate distance. And moreover, we have some uh, other uh, some other monotonic sequence and we call uh, the stabilized value of that sequence uh, as the conjugate. Um, distance. So this is our conjugate distance. Um, and why do we define it like that? Why do we have such an idea? The thing is that the idea comes from uh, simplicial complexity. Uh, this idea comes from uh, simplicial complexity. Uh, and this is due to Jesus Gonzalez. Uh, so he first defined the BC simplicial complexity, and then he considered this monotonic sequence, and he named uh, the stabilized value as the bit simplicial complexity, then he defined, an, uh, sorry, then he um, proved another monotonic sequence and he um, named uh, the stabilized value of that sequence as the simplicial complexity. Uh, and um, why do we get uh, this idea? What is the motivation behind this idea, behind all this idea. Of simplicial complexity. Well, I would say that um, um, Or let me be more, 
whatever. Um, first of all, the BC simplicial complexity is motivated uh, from a theorem from a theorem by Gonzalez. And actually, uh, this theorem um, is the simplicial setting of some other theorems uh, by Fargo, uh, and uh, which is motivated from a theorem by Michael Barber. Uh, well, this is um, this is a theorem in the continuous setting, and actually this theorem is as follows. So, in simplicial complexity, I'm uh, sorry, in topological complexity, we are trying to find the sections uh, of a vibration. So, let's say we start with this pet vibration and uh, let's say on uh, on some uh, subsets on some open subset of x cross x uh, we are looking for some section can we find uh, a section of pi actually uh, this is equivalent to say that if we consider these two maps, first projection and to the second projection, uh, these are homotopic. So this is the continuous setting version. And um, actually we uh, all have uh, the motivation from this guy. So, as you can see, we want them to be C contiguous. Actually, we want them to be homotopic in the continuous setting. Uh, and then we define the simplicial complexity. And in a similar way, uh, conjugated distance is defined. We want them to be so con uh, C contiguous. And now um, we have a powerful theorem which says that uh, this is the in the continuous setting. So this is homotopic distance. Uh, and this is um, the contiguous distance of um, simplicial maps and the uh, realization of uh, the simplicial maps. So they must be equal. And this theorem allows us to uh, import to the simplicial realm, the properties of homotopic distance. As I mentioned before, if you remember, there were um, properties from one to eight. Uh, so let me recall some of them. One of them is this guy. So here we are saying that contiguity distance is contiguity invariant in some sense. Um, and uh, also uh, we can talk about um, the triangle inequality um, and some other inequalities such as uh, taking the products of the simplicial maps. Uh, and we also have some relation with the continuous setting. And um, that's all. And these are the references um, for the first simplicial analog, first simplicial analog. Uh, and this guy is for the second simplicial analog. And um, right, this is where the simplicial complexity is written. Uh, and most of the theorems in this talks, uh, in this talk, uh, 
due to Macias Virgos and Mosquera Lewis is from that uh, paper and so on. And thank you very much.